this is what the Antichrist wants us to be. They want us to continue to live in a shoebox, which is just a little notch. They embrace us when we live in a shoebox because we eat out of their hand. Only thing that we consume and digest in our system is that which they give us. We have no mindset of our own. We go and come when the Antichrist tells us to. We have no refuge of our own to lay down and rest because we live in a shoebox. We either got to live what in the habitat which they give us and not the habitat of our own. This is what we do. Because our intelligence and knowledge is limited because there is only so much you can get in a shoebox because that's what you live in. A shoebox is a small force. There's no room to turn around. It's just like a prison. Even though you seem to be free, you're not free because you have to honor the command of another human being because you live in a shoebox. But if you live in a motel, you own a motel, or you live in a large structure, have found that you own that, you is more greater than that man who lives in a shoebox. That's the reason I know some of the ministers get tired of me and say he's wish washing. But God's ministers supposed to have the greatest of this earth. He can't live in no shoebox because he got to cater to large congregations of the earth. Not out of falsehood, but out of the integrity of his heart towards his Lord God who created everything and his Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for you. Because he got to be able to be, he got to be worthy to be, and he have to have the means to live. By his requirements is far greater than the man that he leave. He you will see him dressed in the finest clothes and the driving a car that won't quit on him and standing up speaking against the Antichrist. My means have been small because God placed me here. But God showing his strength and his power through me that even as he delivered food to Elisha by a crow, even as he delivered Daniel out of the lion's den, that same God who delivered the Hebrew children out of the fire of burnings for a testimony unto me today to speak unto the world about these things which will come shortly. We're at the pediment of the return of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ arrived this time, he will not be the one that you nailed to the cross and the one you rebuked and you beat with a whip. He will not be that same God that you said he was not God, and you spit on him. He was, we would come with revenge because of the, your heart, the way you were. And what he was going to do, he's going to take out what he didn't take out on your father. He's going to take it out against you. And at that time, Upon his arrival, you're going to beg for peace, and there will be no peace. 
you're going to pray for peace and pray for salvation, but that will not be one. You're going to be looking for a prophet around you, and there will not be a prophet. Even until the child that's born around him, you will seek him for wisdom, because the wisdom that your God had placed before you from the foundation of the earth. He gonna take that away from you. You drug dealers of the black race, God placed everything in your habitat from the foundation of the earth through Adam and Eve because he gave them domain of the earth. But why would you do like the rebellious house of Israel, take that which God gave you and trample it on your feet and you go to a person who has no interest of you, have no values of your interest. <coughs> and mine, you trade the gold, the silver of the earth that God placed upon you, you trace it for that which have no life and have no substance of meaning alone. And you walk around sporting as if you is a proud man and the thing that these people promise to you, you have became blinded by what they do until you cannot see the true meaning. You think there's a thing of life. This is what you do. And you praise as if you is a great man. Flying around with a jet, you put that jet in the ground and you ain't gonna raise now another jet up out the ground. You driving around in these fine cars and you, if you put that car in the ground, it's not gonna yield you a uh, single car rather than five or six cars. It making you a foolish heart making you work against yourself and becoming a destructive part of your own food chain. But yet you brag on the man that created and manufactured these crap. You could go and take an aspirin. And you set that aspirin up there in a jar all the day and you watch it with your foolish heart. That aspirin is not going to move. You can put a pair of scissors up there on your table and you can watch it all you want. That sizzle, pair of scissors will not move. I'm coming to reality here. Everything that the man have created from his witchcraft, through his laboratory, through his knowledge of schooling, it can don't have a life of a reproduction system. So how can you embrace the thing that man created with his horn hand and place them above the thing that God created and, and told, spoke to it from its foundation, said be fruitful from and multiply, and yet you embrace the thing that cannot multiply that man created and made you think that he was greater than God and you went after him and you served the ways of the empty. These are vessels to kill. These are vessels to destroy all that ill about God, and you go and you embrace these things, and you say, and you think that they are going to make you great in the earth, and we have came to the epitome of the salvation of our God, and our deliverance of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, where he is coming to bring destruction upon this world, and there's no hiding place to be found. God sent me here to speak to you. He sent me 